on on normal circumstances my father would be very excited when we are coming home and he asked me who are you with i said i'm with the children he said okay okay fine so when we got to the house we got there very fast normally there's traffic in Ruaka, but that day there was no traffic in Ruaka. so we got to the house in moshada area right opposite kenge kenge in a twinkling of an eye in about 10 10 minutes we were there after the call when i got there and i was i we knocked the door the children were shouting guka open the door my dad came down and he said uh, please go around the house and use a, another door i did not understand why he meant uh, he was asking me to do that, yet that is the normal door we use. So he told me, I told him, Dad, why? I have, I have luggage and the children. I cannot go all the way around. He said, just listen to what I'm saying and go around. I told him, if you don't have your key, I have my gate key. So he said, it's okay, let me just open the door for you. So he opened. Uh, he said, I have found my key. Let me just open for you the door. So he opened the, the door. He picked my bag and he walked us upstairs. So when we were going upstairs, uh, when we were passing the kitchen, I, I saw a lady. There was a lady in the in the kitchen, and there was smell of food, as if he was waiting for us, and uh, freshly made food. So he was, she was wiping the count, the kitchen counters. I asked my dad, "Who is that lady?" Uh, he said, "This is a lady. Uh, I normally call to come and clean the house occasionally." On the normal circumstances, I'm the one who normally sends a cleaner every once a week to do cleaning and laundry for him. And the cleaner was there two days prior to that uh, that day. So I asked him, when Jiro was here two days ago, didn't she do cleaning, thorough cleaning? And yet, uh, uh, you did not inform me so that I would have told her to come. Number two, she's supposed to cook for you and put food for you in the fridge eh? until the next time she comes. He said, no, uh, if, even this one, I normally call her because she doesn't leave her. When I need the house cleaned, like now, there were things I was removing, so there was a lot of dust. And I, but I didn't want much trouble. I just knew there was something beyond that statement. I, I was tired from a six hour journey. My children were exhausted and a two hours interview. So we just went to the sitting room with my children. I removed my jacket, we sat down. While sitting, there was a commotion in the kitchen between my dad and this lady. And the lady was saying, if you don't tell her today, I am going. My father was saying, can you keep quiet? The lady kept insisting that if you don't tell her today, Mimi Nainda. So I told, uh, uh, then my dad said, shut up. This is my daughter. These are my children and you must respect them. So the lady was like, ah, Kwani, me, Nainda. So I, I decided to go and check what was happening in the kitchen. When I got to the kitchen, the lady, my dad walked out and the lady continued to pretend to be wiping the same counters. So I asked her, you seem to have finished the work you were doing. Uh, did you do laundry? She said, no. So you just cleaned the house and the dishes and cooked? She said, yeah. So how much will you charge for that? You're done with your work? She said, yes, I'm done. So how much will you charge for that? I don't even charge. And uh, she looked at me like, you know, so I was like, what does that mean? What do you mean you don't charge? You come to work for free. My dad walked back to the kitchen when she had, he had over a conversation. And he said, Isabel, uh, it is important. You get to know this lady. Uh, this lady is my friend and just like i told you she comes once in a while to clean for me the house and do for me a few things when i need them done like cook so i can put food in the fridge so she said when i when he said that i told him that um you know there th uh, i i just told him i'm not ready for this and uh, there are things i don't expect you to discuss with you or to engage myself with so he slapped me the first time i asked him dad why are you slapping me you're slapping me because of an unknown person a person we don't know he said um, I, I will not only beat you, I will kill you and bury you and forget about you. I asked him, why? Kill me. Okay, fine. If that's what you've decided, we are a byproduct of our choices. That's what I told him. I told him, you cannot say you're, you have a friend and because of your friend, you're beating me now because she's cooking in our house. You did not send us a memo not to come to you. You should have told us, send us a memo to tell us not to come to this house anymore. We are no longer entitled. Don't, do not embarrass me and do not try to, to, to do the things you're doing right now. Then he hit me again. I asked him, Neke Kiruna, hey daddy, you know, I stood up. And I started walking away now from him. Neke Kiruna, I asked him, what is the problem? Neke Kiruna, hey daddy. Then he said, Niere, arrogance ya kutia komirehe haha, ogorage ya komirehe haha. Then the lady was standing at the corner and she was smiling. And then my dad started getting aggressive. I told him, Nye daddy, re, duga shirate negoro ga mahaha ohore. I'm not going to stand here, you hit me. Like that, the guitar, the guitar fell on the seat. So I started walk, now running around the table. 
and he would follow he was following me at this time my children are watching everything and they are they are screaming and telling uka wacha kuchapa mami wacha kuchapa mami my son is two and a half years old and the other one is three years and ten months so you can imagine the trauma they have gone they have had a very strong bond with their grandfather and they're asking him kwani unachapa mama yangu kwani unachapa mama yangu and he's not listening my father was wild this is not my father i would completely agree if i was told that my father was intoxicated on that day only that he didn't seem to be intoxicated because my dad would never do anything like that on a normal circumstance so and the fact that we parted ways about two months prior to this and he's the one who drove me to isiolo we didn't have any quarrels he took me and the children to isiolo on the 24th of december when i was recalled to work after the med medic strike so we didn't have any quarrels so coming to encounter this made me really wonder why my father would was doing the things he was doing to me and my children